what would you want me wanting a horse for in Middleton? <laughs> well, we barely moved into the jail when James Mackenzie, the sheep stealer, was brought in. Well, he was taken red-handed. Side bottom, that's George Rhodes' manager, found him with a thousand sheep belonging to George Rhodes. So we arrested him. And James Mackenzie escaped in the fog. Well, Sergeant Seeger wasn't going to waste resources looking for him on the plains because sooner or later he was going to come to Littleton. And sure enough, he appeared in one of the boarding houses. And Sergeant Seeger got himself all dressed up like a drover. And off he went to arrest the dangerous man. He had all his pistols and guns with him and he locked the boarding house keeper in the cellar for her own good. And off he went up to the loft to meet Mackenzie. <coughs> well, Mackenzie didn't even have a gun. And he came quietly, only begging to keep his little dog with him. He was a big man, excitable, nervous, and a Highlander who spoke nothing but Gaelic. Well, he spoke a little English, but I don't think he understood what was going on all through the trial. Oh, there was such interest in his trial. The, there was quite, everyone was, the court was quite crowded. And there was not a little bit of satisfaction that someone had put something over the greedy squatters. Well, he stood there like a stone. They might have been talking to a brick wall. And they brought the little dog into court. All the things they said about James Mackenzie's dog. She only answered to the Gaelic. She didn't bark. But that didn't make her a witch fit to be hung. She was, they said she was a shapeshifter. But I wasn't going to see that little poor creature killed for no fault of her own. <coughs> so I said I'd take her. But then George Rhodes spoke up. And he took the dog. And little good it did her. The dog wouldn't work for anyone but Mackenzie. And she wouldn't breed. Well, New South Wales had just stopped taking our convicts. So James Mackenzie was probably one of the very first to get hard labour in a New Zealand prison. He got five years hard labour in Littleton Jail. And he escaped. Well, we didn't even have a wall or a fence. And the man could run like a horse. He was all over Mount Pleasant before anyone could stop him. But they took him on the other side in Christchurch and they brought him back to the jail and they put him in 18 pound irons. And in 18 pound irons, James Mackenzie escaped. <laughs> this time he got all the way up to Courtney. But he was recognised when he went into a sheep station to get a little food. And they fed him all right and then they arrested him. They tied him up and put him on the back of a dray and he set off back to Littleton. And they had gone more than a few miles before James Mackenzie escaped. <laughs> this time they shot him in the back and in the thigh and his wounds hadn't healed before James Mackenzie escaped. And this time we couldn't find hide nor hair of him. But the more he brought him in, they trussed him up and brought him in on a pole for 10 pounds. And he was in a terrible state. Oh, we'd had a dreadful meeting. But Mr. Tancred, you know, from West Melton? Well, he was the new sheriff and he talked to James Mackenzie. And he came to the conclusion that he was innocent. That he was simply uh, employed to do the droving. And he talked to Fitzgerald and the two of them persuaded the governor and James Mackenzie got a free pardon. He only served 10 months of his five years. And we were pleased to see the back of him. We couldn't really keep the likes of Mackenzie. The jail had never a wall or even a fence. There was just the market on one side. There was the England Brothers Builders Yard on the other and our jailer's house in front, and Bill Cheney's jail behind. 
Oh, there was a, a bee hut that had been used in the early days. You know, they put a dozen sabers in that bee hut. And they jumped up and down on the floor and broke through the floor and lifted the jail onto their shoulders <laughs> and went walking down to the wall. <laughs> Well, Sergeant Sager saw them coming. <laughs> it wasn't hard to see everything in the <laughs> And he put in some, he knew the boys were going, were, were traveling blind. So he put in some pigs and he steered the jail round to the police station. <laughs> and he was very proud of himself. He said he was the only policeman in the world to have arrested a lockup. <laughs> 